10%. That's the average return of the stock market or VOO in the first half of 2024 alone. VOO is already up 16%. And let's look at other familiar names. Apple is up 16%, so on par. Microsoft, 22%. Amazon, 30%. Google, 32%. Doubles the market. Meta, 44%. Even more impressive. If you own any of these, congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. Wait, wait, that's not all. If you follow any news or watch even any of the YouTube ads, you will know generative AI is the biggest thing right now. So, all those data center infrastructures, chip manufacturers, chip designers, semiconductor companies, server racks, all their stocks are doing not just great. Shockingly insane. Broadcom, they make data center switches, communication chips, is up 50%. TSF up 69%. Dell 89%. Nvidia up 152%. SMCI 190%. Which means if you put 1K in SMCI in January 1st, 2024, you'll have almost 2K now. That is just ridiculous. Ridiculous, dude. But let's face it, most of us don't have $1,000 laying around on January 1st, so we cannot really turn 1K into 2K like that. Maybe you're like me, I get paid every two weeks, so I invest every two weeks. Which means, even though I have VOO in my portfolio, I'm not exactly up 16%, because the money that I put in VOO in June will have less gain than the money that I put in VOO in January 1st. That's just how math works. And I did the math for us. With my bi-weekly auto-recurring investment schedule, the return of VOO is about 9%. My current portfolio with the same bi-weekly auto-investment schedule in the first half of 2024 gave me an about 15% return, up almost 36k, including gains from stocks, options, dividends, and cash interests. This is real money, real numbers, real performance in a real Robinhood account. With this account, I only have one goal, which is to outperform VOO, outperform the market. And my portfolio is achieving it so far. In designer's lingo, it meets the user's needs. That's awesome. However, however, is it just luck? Is it sustainable? What's the magic? What did I buy? What did I sell? Therefore, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to use the most user-friendly language to go over all of the above. First, I'm going to go over my strategy. What stocks do I have now? What was my execution? Then I'm gonna dive into the changes in my portfolio. Why did I sell out of Vichy and Hershey? And what were the A stocks that I bought and why I bought them? So follow along, I'm sure you will learn something useful. Now grab your favorite drink and let's get into it. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. It's always fun for me to share how I use my design thinking to invest in stock or company to put it more accurately. So let's cut right to chapter one, the strategy. My investing strategy to get here is simple and it has not changed since my last recap video. Number one, buy good companies and two, trade options on those good companies. For stocks, my portfolio consists of good companies defined by these five metrics, which I learned from the book Investing for Growth by Terry Smith. Here are the stocks that I own, Tesla, Airbnb, Meta, Costco, Chipotle, Google, Apple, Williams-Sonoma, AutoZone, FICO, Broadcom, NVIDIA, and Dell. Once I calculate those five metrics for my portfolio as a whole, here's what I've got. And these are the numbers. For the premise is, if all my numbers are better than the ones of the market, then my performance should be better as well. And the result so far shows, which paints a much clearer picture now how to outperform the market. I also have SCHG, which I think is the best ETF out there that can outperform VOO long term. I explain why I bought SCHG in my previous recap video, link up here and description down below. The performance also proved itself. SCHG is up 24% compared to the 16% from VOO. To put SCHG back into my design process, I was really testing it to see if it's a good one to keep. And now, I think it's a keeper. For all the stocks and ETFs I have, I did not do anything fancy. Every two weeks, some of my paychecks goes to my Robinhood account, and then Robinhood would automatically use that money to buy those great companies for me. Everything happens automatically. I also have some alerts set up on my Robinhood, so occasionally I will buy more when there's a dip. 
And that's all, nothing technically challenging or difficult really. I set it up once and it just prints money on its own. For options, selling costs and puts are still what boosted my performance. I sold some calls on Apple, Tesla, and I sold some puts on Airbnb, Google, SMCI. One thing I did learn about selling calls is that with established companies, it's not worth selling calls on. Selling calls on Apple, for example, is a huge, huge mistake for me. If you look at it, the premium is so low. And if Apple, the stock, goes up 10%, which it did this year after the WWDC, it's really hard to roll over. And I was pretty much forced to get exercised on. High risk, low reward, it's better to just buy and hold Apple. As much as I outperformed the market for the first half of 2024, this is by no means bragging, okay? It's by no means bragging. Because remember NVIDIA, SMCI, they're up 152% and more. My 15%, even though it's on brand, is like change. Keep the change. I'm serious. I have a close friend who works on AI infrastructure. So he knows what company, what stocks can do well, and he bought exactly those. And now he's loaded. In fact, very loaded. And I am very broke. Yeah, it sucks being broke, but I learned one thing from this. Understand your edge and make the money that you can make. My friend has an edge in AI infrastructure and he used it really, really well. So instead of pulling my hair out and regret, why did I not listen to him? I should just lean into my edge. And my edge is consumer products, which is a perfect segue to chapter two. What changes I made for the first half of 2024? Since my last recap video, I sold out of two stocks. I sold out of Vici mainly, mainly because it's not very tax efficient to keep Vici in my individual Robinhood account. The dividend yield is excellent, but it's taxed as ordinary income. A minor reason is interest rate is so high, there's, it impacts the real estate sector. So Vichy, the stock itself, is not going anywhere. At the same time, the fundamental is strong. I still believe in Vichy, I still like it. That's why I sold out all of it and bought Vichy in my retirement account, which is a lot more tax efficient. For Hershey, the stock itself has been selling off crazy. The reason is actually quite straightforward. The production of cocoa has been really low, meaning the raw material to make chocolate is really low, which drives the price of cocoa up. And since Hershey still have to make their favorite chocolates, they still have to buy cocoa at high price, which impacts the margin of their chocolate. Hershey has to raise prices to counteract that, but still, how much can you raise on the chocolate bar? Therefore, it makes Hershey, the company, a lot less consistent and less predictable. And now I want more consistency and predictability. And I think my money can be spent elsewhere with other opportunities. At the same time, its fundamental is still good. It's still a pretty good company. So instead, I just bought a call option to just keep some stake in it. So those are the two that I sold. These are the A stocks that I bought. I'm a designer, so I personally love simplicity. So I prefer fewer stocks. But when I apply my design thinking on investing, I have to balance some trade-offs to meet my goal of outperforming VOO. I added eight because I learned about statistics and risks. I know I will be wrong for sure at some point with some stock. So if I only have one stock, and if I'm wrong about it, I'm f So I have to have more. But I cannot have 500 because one, I don't have time to manage it, and two, it's the same as owning VOO and getting the average market return. To outperform the market, you have to have a more concentrated portfolio. But how many more? Two more? Three more? 10, 20? To put it in perspective, we can look at this chart. Once you have around 10, the risk of a portfolio drops drastically. So I handpicked a few great consumer product companies with high key metrics, achieving these numbers and ended up with these 13 stocks. I plan to do a deep dive on each of the stocks, why I bought it, what was my analysis, and what was the decision-making process like. If you want to see a particular company first, let me know in the comment. And that is a recap of the first half of 2024. It's going well and I'm happy about it. At the same time, that is the past. If you want to see my plan for the future for the rest of 2024, what do I plan to buy, sell, make sure to join my 
Discord channel down below to stay up to date. Alrighty, thank you all for tuning in in this recap video. I hope you learned something useful or insightful. If so, smash the like button down below to support this very small channel and I will greatly appreciate it. So far this year, selling put has brought me about 3k profit, which is pretty good money on top of my stock gains. If you want to find out how selling put options work and how to sell them, great news. I've used my best craft at design thinking to capture that in these videos for you. Check it out right there. Like and subscribe to support this very small channel and keep using design to square up finances. See you all in the next video. Cheers.